Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie the Zedon. I'm your host, Chad Fury 333 or Dominic. I'm still not sure what to use for Zero K. Everything else is Dominic, so I guess I might as well go with that. Anyway, I'm your host, Dominic, and we're going to be going on to a match between Ra and Philthus on Adansonia. Let's get right to it. We have Philthus going for the Ampot Factory, and Ra going for presumably a couple thugs onto their commander, because that is how Ra plays. Although, actually, no, Ra's starting with bandits, so they are possibly just going for a standard type of play. For those of you not familiar, Rar likes their commander a lot. Rar is a player that will upgrade their commander in nearly every single match just to make sure that they have some way of dealing damage. It's just how they like to play. They like to throw a comm at their opponent. But this match looks like they're actually going to be playing a bit more normal. Field Thoughts, on the other hand, doesn't really have any gimmick. He, they're just a really good player. That's, that's their thing. They are strong, they know how to play the game, and they're playing Amphbots on a map which does support Amphbots fairly well, but at the same time, Amphbots have been a bit weak recently. Ducks are often used, and they're pretty good against... They're they are strong against Cloaky, because they can one-shot Glaives. With Bandits, they can almost... They can two-shot them. It's a small difference. It's 50 health difference, but that's enough, because Ducks only deal 230 damage when both of their missiles hit. And then, of course, there's the boys, and occasionally you see scallops, which I would like to see a lot more of. I understand why we don't see a lot of them. Their range isn't that high. It's difficult to get them to work especially well. But at the same time, when it comes to dealing with bandits, when it comes to dealing with any kind of raiders that aren't glaives, scallops could theoretically do the job. We just don't see it. We usually do see the boys instead, which essentially it's duck, boy, grizzly. And that, to me, feels like it's underusing the amphibot factory. I'm curious if, if Fieldthos is going to approach it any way differently, but right now, it is pure duck. Likely, they're assuming Rar went for Cloaky, which is an incorrect assumption, as Rar did indeed go for the Shieldbot Factor, which does mean that this bandit does have a slight advantage in that it's not going to get one shot, but at the same time, it can't fight anymore, because it's going to die, and it's not a glaive, so it does not regenerate its HP. And it looks like Fieldthos, they've switched over to Archers. Hey, there's a unit I didn't even think of. Archers! Because that's actually another really good option. Especially since recently they've they've been buffed. They don't need to refill in water anymore. They just have their ammo. That used to be the thing, and now that archers don't have that requirement, I do expect to see them more often. Because unlike scallops, they have the range to make it work against anything that's not, like, fleas, or otherwise right next to you. Or, I guess, one-shot units like ducks. It's... The scallop has a strange place in the game. It doesn't quite seem to get the use I would like it to see. It does get a fair bit of use if you're playing Amphib on a water map, but then why are you playing Amphib on a water map while you're not using ships? Amphib is not really built for pure water maps. It can sort of work. Scallops are a good option there, but that's not the case here. What is the case here, however, is that we do have ducks going to a Stardust and about to die. Or at least the first one's about to die. It, Its death might be in vain? It's not in vain. Field thought saving the rest of their ducks to make sure that they don't run into that Stardust. But being that they are playing Amphib on a map where it's partially water, giving them the advantage of getting around that Stardust entirely, which I like. I really like that, and Rar does not seem to be responding to that possibility yet. And I don't see in the build queue either. They have nothing I can see that is going to be dealing with these these ducks going around the side. Now, what I really want to see is the archers engaging the bandits. So archers, they have you know, 105 DPS, 104 DPS, 300 double range, which compared to bandits is outranging them. So that would actually be quite handy. And it also pushes units back. And considering that they no longer have to worry about ammo, well, this is going to be amazing for them. At the same time, Fieldtoss is expanding rapidly across the map. RAR is more focused on their backline, trying to make sure that that's been built up. But unfortunately, they seem to have forgotten about the fact that this is water, and Amphibs work well in water. So, RAR is going to have a field day. Rar's ducks, rather, except for this one in the middle that was unfortunate enough to be in the crossfire of its allies. But at the same time, we do have the bandits coming in here, and the archers able to push them back. Quite literally so. And that is exactly why I was excited to see the archers, because they do the job well. I mean, this is exactly why Fieldhouse pushed over to it, and I appreciate that. At the same time, though, the ducks that came up over the northeast did find too much resistance. They got past the Stardust just fine, got rid of one of the metal extractors, but the two bandits that were up here, plus the Lotus, was too much for them to handle. Again, they do not deal with bandits the same way they deal with glaives. However, with the archer push, we could see an, a, a similar assault coming in very shortly, and that would be far harder to deal with. 
The loners would have no problem, yes, but at the same time, the bandits would be in some trouble. The speaking of trouble, though, we do have this one conch over to the southwest completely destroyed and stopping field from taking the southwest for at least a couple minutes. One archer is going there to try to clear that up, but it's still not going to be enough to completely save that. Thankfully for Field Thoughts, they do have an economic advantage of about 10 metal per second, so they're not going to be losing too much in the process, but they are going to be still a little bit disappointed. With Archer up here, however, there shouldn't be any problems. I mean, the bandits in the back are getting completely torn to pieces by an Archer flanking them, and of course the Archer in the main base will stop them once they get there. This is fine. Field Thoughts has full control over their side of the map. They are going to be sending over a conch right now, so this is theirs. It was lost briefly, but it wasn't a huge deal, and Field Thoughts, like I said, way ahead in terms of metal, way ahead in terms of territory. The one thing I'm curious about is whether RAR is going to try to expand to the center and try to make that work as a way of getting more metal, or even expand to the northwest. As you can see, the northwest has been completely untouched by RAR, so why not? I mean, that's worked for Field Thoughts thus far. And really, Field Thoughts at this point, they've got... Oh man, they already have 2,000 metal advantage. Their metal used advantage is even bigger with Field Thoughts. Was Veltos accessing? No, sorry, raw rather. But no, neither was accessing, neither really reclaimed. It's just that we have just a little bit more metal used. Okay, this is an odd situation. More metal used than produced, yet the reclaim doesn't cover. Oh, the overdrive, right, yeah. Yeah, the, the overdrive covers that discrepancy pretty well. Still, though, Fieldhouse has a clear advantage economically. They have a clear type base advantage. We do see some rogues coming in here to try to deal with the archers. Good choice, but it's still a question of whether or not they can deal with the archers on their own turf. The archers should be healing up a little... Yeah, they're healing up quite a bit in the water. Because that's how amphibs work. And with the army of archers coming in here, these bandits have very little hope of working out for anything as they are getting pushed away. Managed to get one archer in the process, but still, the entire army is being completely separated, unable to help itself out. And also torn apart by smashing into cliffs. This thug! This thug given a last little paragliding session before going down into machine hell. I mean, at least it went out in an exciting way. Can't say I'd want to go out that way, but I can't say it was the worst way to go. But yeah, that is the other scary thing about archers. Because they push with enough momentum, they can just wreck units across the landscape. And speaking of the grizzly I was talking about earlier, there it is. So instead of the normal duck boy grizzly progression, we have a duck archer grizzly progression. I like it. I'm really glad archers are seeing use. I've never really seen them used much before, but they are a unit that I always kind of wanted to see and see how they worked well when they worked well. So that ammo removal buff, definitely the way to go. Also, Raw are actually having a bit of trouble with their production at the moment. They're... Are they building any caretakers? No, none are in, none are planned. They have a lot of build power being used across the map, but I guess it's just a matter of getting used to that reclaim they had, which they didn't have before. Still, though, they only have 20 build power going into their factory. By contrast, Fieldthos has 40 build power going into their factory, on top of everything being built up on the side, and I like this. Building a couple storages just in case. Their commander is quite forward. In case RAR has anything up their sleeve, like gunships, like mass... A mass Harpy Rush, or maybe even Mass Nimbus, or just throw out a crow, because why not? I don't expect that, but th theoretically could happen. It's not going to, but, you know, maybe. No, we are not seeing that at all. And instead, we are seeing a massive shield push, which I think has a lot to do with the fact that factories are more expensive. They do cost 800 now. They no longer cost 1,000. That was partially reverted once it was clear that, you know, you could play without fact switching. But it seems like that's going to be... An interesting thing to see in the future. I'm, I'm curious how that's going to develop, if we're going to go back to 600 or if we're going to stay at 800. But it's worth noting that neither player has switched to air or gunship. Neither player has switched at all. Even though Fieldhouse has 63 metal and could very easily switch. 50 going into their plant, they have the other 20 just, or the other 10 or so, just pish, just, just positioned around the map in various places, adding torches, adding metal extractors, adding defenses. They aren't too worried about anything. They do have... How much build power here? 24 build power coming from the commander alone. So yeah, they're definitely fine spending their metal. It's just a question of whether or not they're able to deal with it with Amphib, and it looks like they can. Looks like the Archer Grizzly mix has been working out fairly well to at least put pressure onto Rar. I'm going to be curious to see how well it's going to actually tear this apart, because we aren't seeing... We aren't seeing any Racketeers. They were made more expensive, so no surprises there. But also, we're not seeing anything that's dealing, say, status damage, which would really tear apart these shields. 
And we're seeing stuff that just deals damage, but I would like to see some boys. I know, I know, I was happy that archers were there, and it wasn't boys, and it was a bit different, but boys deal slow damage, so they tear these shields to pieces. I don't expect we're going to see that, though. It looks like Fielthos just wants to have a mass grizzly push and make that be the way to go, make that be their strategy. I'm curious if they have any Strider Hub in, in production anywhere, but it looks like no. Strider Hubs are not in the cards, and Raw at the same time, they might want to invest in something like that, or just some extra build power, because they are accessing quite a bit. In fact... Their excess right now, 1,700 excess. That is, that's kind of unacceptable when you're in the back line, when on the back foot like this. Like Rar has accessed as much as Philthas has over has out attrition to them. So Philthas's attrition is essentially working double at this point. Still, though, they have the Aspis. They do have a bit more of a shield ball, which is nice. But the question, of course, is how is that going to be dealt with? And the answer. Well, the archers, the grizzlies, there's a lot of damage being pushed in. And shields, of course, only deal with damage that is less than their current value. So, or rather, pass through damage that's less than their current value. So, if the grizzlies attack with a 1500 damage attack, well, sub 50 damage attack, it doesn't take much to take the shields down enough to actually get through. I mean, it's not a 750 damage single attack, it is a beam attack over time. So, the shields are actually reasonably effective against that. But it's still worth noting that. Very powerful single attacks do get through shields easily. Even though that's not what Fieldhouse has. That might be Fieldhouse might have in the future. And despite my earlier comments, we do in fact have gunship switches on both sides. We have Nimbus and Locust coming out from Field from RAR, which makes sense. I mean, be able to smoothly surround these Grizzlies and take them out that way. And on Fieldhouse's end, we don't have much. Thus far, Fieldhouse is still focusing on the Grizzlies, despite the fact that they have finished the gunship plant. No units are under production. And considering the circumstances, I would kind of like to see them just go for tridents. But that would be a read. That would have to be a matter of realizing that their opponents likely also went for gunships. And no, we have the crow. It's Fielthas's crow. And that is going to be a... That is going to be a very deadly crow. Assuming, of course, that the Nemesis don't manage to do their job in the meantime. And now that the Nemesis have been seen, I do expect to see something to deal with this. Either anglers, maybe... Maybe adding tridents after the crow... I mean, the Grizzly is doing a fine enough job trying to deal with this as best it can, but it's only as much it can do when it has all this fire coming at them, and, yeah, naturally, go into the water. Just don't try to fight it. Get in the water, work from there, heal back up. But this does mean that that force has been scouted. Fieldtoss is well aware that Rar has that force available, and that is going to be a problem. Still, though, Rar does have the does have, like I said, the Metal Excess issue, and Orphelius pointed out that RAR is quite rusty, and they don't like Adansonia. I don't know why they don't like Adansonia. This is this is probably my third or fourth favorite map in the game, but I also have weird taste in maps, so there you go. My favorite map's Trojan Hills. I'm not sure if that's unusual or not, but I also like spiders, so <laughs> that is unusual. Regardless, back to the game, we do have the Shield Ball being a little bit forward, and the Grizzlies in large enough numbers that they do essentially count as two striders now, just in terms of cost. It's 10,000 metal. Yeah, that's that's two Dantes. On top of the Crow, Fieldos is just taking full advantage of their massive economic advantage that they've been building up this entire game. And RAR, they... I can kind of see why this map being unfamiliar to them and being disliked by them would be a problem, because they didn't expand as quickly as their opponent. Which means, of course, that they didn't get the metal that allows Fieldos right now to just completely wreck everything. And that, on top of the overdrive pylons being pushed around the entirety of Fieldhouse's base, this is going to be very difficult to contend with. Like Rar, in the meantime, they do have a quite large energy reserve. They could actually overdrive a fair bit more if they pushed pylons around the map, but they hadn't. And at this point, it's a little bit late to have regrets, because we are into the likely final ma battle of this match. I mean, Fieldhouse pushing... Well, Field is being pushed back quite a bit. Rar doing what they can to get in here, but the shields are going down, and as soon as those goes down, the Grizzlies are going to have a field day, and they're already getting rid of a handful of outlaws here and there. The thugs being pushed back into the shield ball. I'm not sure the best option, but still, between the between all the defense turrets, the Nimbuses have nothing to work with, and the ground forces have been torn to pieces. There are hardly any shields left, and that is forcing Rar back, and I don't know if Rar is going to throw in the towel at this point, but I would be impressed if they didn't. I, however, don't see what options they have to stay in this match. They're now 9,000 metal behind by attrition. They are 
30,000 metal behind by unit value. The crow is up. There are half a dozen grizzlies on the map. I don't know what they could do at this point, considering the resources they have. I mean, there are a lot of theoretical things they could do involving setting up rogues and glaives and so forth. Not glaives, sorry. Rogues and stardusts and locusts and all that stuff. And they did manage to get one of the grizzlies, which is going to be some tasty reclaim. It's just a question of how they're going to use that. They don't have much more build power on their factory. They still have just the one worker. I mean, they have the two caretakers near the gunship plant, which is nice, but of course, the gunship plant has been known. Tridents are on the way. Field Toss is well aware they need anti-air. They've got anti-air. So right now, there's not a whole lot that RAR is going to be benefiting from by building these locusts. I mean, sure, they can deal some harassment here and there, but they have to contend with 30,000 unit value difference between them and Philthos, which requires both really intelligent positioning and really well-executed unit counters, because they don't have any real other way back in this match. Maybe, I don't even Striders would be too little. It's too little too late to build anything, really. The only thing I could think of, I, I know it sounds stupid, but if they could buy time, just build up a strategic nuke. Like, just make it shiny. That probably wouldn't work, but honestly, they haven't got much of an option regardless, no matter what they do. I mean, okay, in all seriousness, I could see a switch over to Firewalkers maybe doing the trick, but again, the problem is they're so behind an economy that any kind of fact switch just means they have no army with which to build that, which is why I was joking about the nukes, because they build that, well, their army production is cut in half. Wait, hey, Orphelius, why are you dropping the towel? I thought you subbed. I thought you had a towel. I guess you unsubbed, whatever. I thought you had the towel emote. No, anyway. We have the crow! It has arrived! Yeah, the crow is going to be probably just... That's going to put Rar in such a back foot position. They know it's over. So it's a matter of making sure your opponent knows it's over, and there's nothing like a crow to make that happen. Although, admittedly, the Stardust is doing a number on it, so it it's not quite over yet as far as Rar is concerned, because now the crow's already at half HP. I don't see any real anti-air coming in here. We do have some rapiers coming... Sorry, some harpies coming in with some tridents. So that is something, but at the same time, with the flank going in the south, with all these... Gri How many grizzlies are there? Eight grizzlies! Eight grizzlies! 16,000 metal worth of grizzlies on top of the crow, which surprisingly is not going into the main base to try to deal with everything. I'm not sure why. I guess Field House is much more focused on here, and we can actually find out for sure. Now Field House is more focused back in the main base, as Raw going for a counterattack is finding a decent amount of value, but again, it's... It's still very little, and it's very late. Like, if Fieldhouse House manages to make this work, I could theoretically see them, if they do this three or four times in a row, getting the match. But this is... Now, nah, with the Crow in the main base, there is nothing left. It's going to drop its bombs. This is going to be it. Or at least it... I'd expect it to drop its bombs, but apparently no. Apparently that is not going to be the option. Apparently the Grizzlies are still seen as enough. Uh, it's, we're waiting for this Crow to drop its bombs to make everything work, but... Doesn't even matter. Rara throws in the towel, realizing the game is over. And that is it. And today I learned that Twitch subs are apparently something that only happens for a month. They aren't a permanent thing that you have to opt out of after you've done them. I did not realize that. I thought they were recurring. Or naturally recurring. Anyway. So that is that. That was... A Bit of a one-sided match. I mean, once Field Plus managed to get it going, it really did not go Rar's way at all. I did like the way Rar had set up over here right at the beginning. I mean, they had the bandits near them, they were able to get rid of the ducks, but Field Toss just went for the archers, and we didn't see much counter. We didn't see anything coming out for, say, rogues or thugs or outlaws or anything to well, rogues particularly, to deal with the archers at range. And I wonder if a lot of that is that Rar likely isn't familiar with archers. Nobody ever used archers until recently. They got buffed recently. They got buffed like two or three patches ago. So they've been like this for a month or two. And that's the thing, is that this is two or three months. You've got you've got very little time really when it comes down to it, especially given how much people still playing Amphib go for ducks. I hope to see archers become more used in the meta. Just because it means the Amphib Factory has more to work with. There's more tools in general. But I don't know if we will, just because... At this point, the Amph meta is still pretty solidly duck to buoy to grizzly. But hey, we could. That'd be cool if we did.
Anyway, that is that match. So the next match we're going to have is between Golda and Fielthos on Titan Duel. So this is probably going to be the exact opposite situation because, well, I mean, it's Golda. Golda, despite the fact that they are maybe a bit rusty still, they're not that rusty. They, they really aren't. They've, they've been practicing a lot. So they are going to be... They're like this is gonna be could be one sided. I'm curious. We we might see this work out. We might see this be a complete wash. But whatever it is, we'll be seeing it after the short break. So stay tuned.